Greetings, urban farmers, gardeners, and healthy food visionaries. Farmer Greg here, and welcome to the 474th episode of the Urban Farm Podcast, where every day we work together to educate and inspire you to become part of your food revolution. Summer is upon us here in Phoenix, and it's hot. With more people getting skin cancer these days, I'm not willing to take chances with the sun anymore. Before I introduce today's podcast guest, I want to share with you how I stay cool and comfortable working in the summer heat. My number one strategy is wearing lightweight, breezy, sun-protective clothing, like cool, moisture-wicking shirts and hats that shade my head, ears, and the back of my neck. I partnered with Gemplers.com to handpick my personal favorite sun-protective wear, and you can see them at Gemplers.com forward slash urban farm. That's Gemplers, G-E-M-P-L-E-R-S dot com slash urban farm. When you use the code urban farm zero one, you get 20% off your first order. Heidi and I use these essential items on this list every day on the urban farm. Check them out and stay cool this summer. Today on our podcast, we have someone who is taking an everyday vegetable to the table in delicious new ways. We're talking with Amy Lacey about the very versatile cauliflower. Amy is the author of Cauliflower Kitchen, 125 cauliflower-based recipes for the carbs you crave. She is the co-founder and CEO of Cauliflower Foods, and her cauliflower products have been featured in Food and Beverage Magazine, GQ, and OK Magazine. They were also named one of Whoopi's favorite things on The View and won Clean Eating Magazine's Clean Choice Award two years in a row. Congratulations, by the way, on that. Welcome to the show today, Amy. Are you ready to rock cauliflower? I sure am. Awesome. So I shared a bit about you. Can you fill in the blanks for us and share more about the path you took to get where you're at today? Absolutely. I get asked a lot, how did you come up with this product and how did it become so successful? And unlike most products in the food industry, I didn't create it to make mass national distribution. I created it to serve a purpose for myself and my family. So I was diagnosed a few years ago with autoimmune. I'm one of 50 million people Mm -hmm. who have lupus. I have lupus and Sjogren's. And so what I learned is they put you on some pretty horrendous medications. And in order to get off those medications with side effects, I discovered that I could alter the way that I ate along with getting a lot of sleep and stress relief. So I started with the way I was eating. And one of the things that my family loves is pizza. And I'm a mom of three kids. Yes, I'm a mom of three kids. And we would have, and we still do, they're a little older, so our games are different, but we would have family fun nights which was pizza and games every Friday night. And so when I got sick, that stopped, and I I got really sick for about nine months. And so their lives were altered. My life was altered, my husband's. And I decided that I wanted to bring back some normalcy. So one of the things I tried to do is recreate family fun night with pizza and make it a healthier version. So I found the cauliflower pizza crust recipe. I, By the way, I didn't even like cauliflower. It was not a vegetable <laughs> that you would find in my my fridge right? back then. I was a, I was a broccoli girl. Yep. So I went out on a limb and tried it. And the first time I made it, it was a complete disaster and a mess and it was all over. And I thought, oh, this isn't going to work. But I tried it again and it, it worked. And I fed it to my family. And my oldest is not a vegetable lover and he loved it. So I thought, okay, I'm on to something. And I noticed the next day after eating it and playing games that I didn't have any inflammation. And that was something I really struggled with was inflammation to the yeah. point where it was, de- it was debilitating. So I knew I was on to something and I started making it for friends and family. And I had a fellow friend that was a health coach and she and I started doing healthy happy hours and we would serve it to friends and no alcohol, just healthy pizzas and and different foods. And people love the cauliflower pizza crust. And this was at a time where if you went to the grocery store, you didn't, there was nothing there but fresh cauliflower. You didn't have cauliflower rice or all the products that are on the market today. Those did not exist. So we um, were encouraged by some friends to take it to farmer's market. And we did that and it started selling out 
every week at farmer's market. And I started getting calls from people. Can I pick it up before farmer's market? (laughs) Nice. Yeah, I knew I was on to something and I wanted to pay it forward. And I started researching how to get a license and how to get it into grocery and how to get it into more people's hands. And what I learned is the best way for me for this business was to go online first. And so what we did was we started sharing friends that had purchased it at farmer's market and their success. Many people were coming to purchase it because of various different reasons, whether they wanted to lose weight or they were a diabetic. Um, I had one particular woman named Jessie who had a daughter with autism and her do- the doctor put her daughter on a low carb diet. So she started feeding it to her daughter. And within seven months, Kenzie from being on a low carb diet went from nonverbal to verbal and she ate our pizza every single day. It was part of her diet. So we started sharing those stories online and we found that our online business took off so much so that it became a multi-million dollar business. Wow. And when did you start it? That part so we we launched in 2016 at Farmers Market and we took it online January of 2017 and in the end of 2018 we started going into grocery and for 2019 we will end this year in approximately 10,000 stores. I'm speechless. Wow. <laughs> Seriously, when you said 10,000 stores it's like, "Oh my gosh, what do I say to that?" I just got chills all the way down to my toe. That is totally epic. How do you feel about that? Oh, beyond blessed. I never, like I said, if you look at my business plan for 2017, because Uh at this point I knew, I knew we had something really good. It doesn't even come close to the success that we had by the end of 2017. It just, we have an amazing following. We've now built a team early on. It was just myself and one other person. And we were just working working really hard to pay it forward. And what kept us going, you could, you know, because a new business, a startup, you're scrappy, things fail, you yep. learn a lot. What kept us going was the feedback we received on a daily basis, which was emails of success stories and thank yous. And when you have a diabetic that hasn't been able to eat pizza for years and all of a sudden they can eat pizza again, it, it keeps you going and it, it helps you persevere through tough times. Yeah, Well, especially with as much as we as a culture love pizza, it makes a huge difference. I'll tell you what, being able to eat pizza this way for me is a gift because I have Lyme. My listeners know that. I freely share that I have Lyme disease. And when I eat gluten or too much sugar, it kicks my butt. It absolutely kicks my butt. Yeah. So having this as an option is like the angels are singing. Yes. And we... You know, I made the product and I based the product success on my own inflammation. So knowing that we could not add sugar, knowing that we had to keep it gluten-free, but more importantly, grain-free. And there are a lot of gluten-free products out there. There's a lot of cauliflower gluten-free products, but the key is no fillers. So we use fresh cauliflower. We use the entire head. We do use a little bit of cheese. For me, that isn't a problem. For some people, it is. So we have a dairy-free option as well. We use eggs and spices, and that's it. It's very simple. Wow. And how much cauliflower are you using right now? Oh, my goodness. You must buy it by (laughs) the container load. (laughs) Oh, truckloads. We um, partner with some really amazing farms in Central California, which is why the name is Cali Flower. Uh Uh-huh. And they're, they're just amazing. And we really believe in that farm to table. So literally the cauliflower comes straight off the farm to our plant. We use, I mentioned this, but we use the entire head. So we use the stems and leaves. We're the only product that does that. And there's some added benefits to doing that. And also there's no waste that way. So we're using the entire head and the stems and leaves are amazing. If you haven't tried them, on cauliflower or broccoli, I, I highly recommend doing that. Delicious. Oh, yeah. Well, the whole plant is edible. I don't know why we don't do that all the time. Yeah. We try to avoid waste. So, yeah. And then we started getting requests. And what I love about going online first is that you have that one-on-one connection with your customer. Whereas if you're in a grocery store, you don't, you don't have that connection. You have to go through the grocery store. Mm-hmm. And that's difficult. So, I love that our... 
biggest expense early on besides making the product was we put a lot of money into customer service and it's called our customer care team. And I get to learn all about different customers and what their feedback is. So early on, we were getting feedback. People wanted recipes. They wanted to learn how to do other things besides pizza with cauliflower and with our pizza crust. So we created the Cauliflower Kitchen Cookbook, which you mentioned in the intro. And we partnered with Abrams Publishing and they launched that cookbook in January. And not only did it become a national bestseller, but it also went international. So we've been able to impact a lot of people through our cookbook. And I actually give the actual recipe of the pizza crust that we served at Farmer's Market and that you find in grocery stores now in the cookbook so you can make it yourself. Wow, cool. So I actually, we're going to give away some copies of the book. In fact, we're going to give away some signed copies of the book. But I I just have a copy sitting here in front of me and I thumbed through it and it opened up to waffles. We can make waffles out of cauliflower? We can make waffles out of cauliflower. Absolutely. You can make, I have a dessert section. We have an entree section. By the way, I haven't shared this with anybody, but I love your podcast so much. I'm going to share this with you all that next year, our goal is healthy entrees using cauliflower. So many of the ones that I have in the cookbook, you, you'll you be able to find in the freezer section of your local grocery store. But I love cauliflower for one of the main reasons besides that it's full of antioxidants and it's healthy and all of those. It's also really bland. So it takes on any flavors you put with it. For example, we have a chili chocolate pie recipe in the cookbook. What? And people think, how can, yeah, how can you make dessert out of that? Or waffles, which is a breakfast food. The cauliflower is so bland, so it takes on any of the flavors mm-hmm. that you put with it. It's an amazing vegetable to work with. Yeah, it's kind of like an avocado. The avocados are, you know, they don't have a whole lot of flavors, so you can make them sweet, you can make them savory. So it, it kind of falls in that same category, it sounds like. Yeah, I love avocados. They are a healthy fat. The great thing about cauliflower is it's not a, it's not a fat. So that's good, but avocado is, a lot of our recipes in the cookbook use avocado. I'm a huge fan of avocado. Yeah, awesome. So while we're on your book, let's talk about it a little bit more. This is an amazing book. It's beautiful. Every recipe has a beautiful picture of what you should expect. You know why that is? Tell me. Well, a lot of people think I'm a chef at heart, and I'm not. Someday, when I'm not as involved in cauliflower, which I can't imagine that, but someday that might happen, I want to go to culinary school. Or maybe one day when my kids are out of the house, that'll be my second career. A lot of people think I'm a chef, and I'm not, but I've learned to be one. But I've always used cookbooks, and I notice that I'm most successful if I can see a picture, if I have a visual. I'm a very visual person. So Mm. if the recipe has a picture, it usually is successful for me. So one of my criteria with Abrams Publishing is that we had to have a picture for every recipe. Wow. That's why. Nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. Thank you for that. And so I am thumbing through here. It's, like I said, it's a beautiful book. It's, what, 100 and, oh, 235 pages with 125 cauliflower-based recipes. You got a favorite? Oh, many. Right now, one of my favorites is the shrimp and grits. And I think that's because I lived in Louisiana for a while and I'm missing that Southern hospitality food. I also love the lemony fennel cauliflower salad, the tongue twister. It's delicious. It's an amazing recipe that uses raw cauliflower. So there are many recipes in there and they're very easy. The other thing I love about the cookbook is that we put on the left side of the recipe, we put tabs so that you know exactly what that represents, whether it's gluten-free, grain-free. There's so many people that are now vegan or vegetarian or dairy-free. And then there's a lot of people that are using a lifestyle diet such as paleo or keto. So we've gone ahead and put those in there so that you'll be able to see each recipe and see if it matches your lifestyle. Nice. So you mentioned lemony fennel cauliflower salad. I just happened to plop it open to this page and the tabs that she's talking about for this salad say gluten-free, grain-free, paleo, keto-friendly, vegetarian, and dairy-free. And if you use maple syrup, it is also vegan. (laughs) That's pretty cool. Yes. It's delicious. Almond ricotta and caramelized onion sandwich. 
<laughs> Let's just end this now, and I'm just going to go uh, make some of these recipes. Another favorite. It's delicious. And you can make it. We also have some substitutes, so you can make it fit your lifestyle needs. Yeah. And, it, and for us, it's about lifestyle. It's about being able to eat your favorite foods again and just tweak them so that it fits your lifestyle. Yeah. Wow. What an amazing story. And I, I can't tell you how many podcast guests that we've had in almost 500 episodes that what propelled them in their journey was some kind of dis-ease that showed up. For me, it was the Lyme disease. For you, it was an autoimmune. It, but it's, it's amazing to me how many people get pushed forward because of that. I often say that I've been able to make a message out of my mess. And so my life was a mess at one time and I had a really low rock bottom time and I persevered through it and now we're able to pay it forward and doors have opened. Like I can't even believe how many doors have opened for us. It's such a blessing. And like I said before, getting those letters and that feedback just allows us to persevere because it's tough. It's tough to create a business and have it be so successful so quickly. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yes, I've been self-employed for four, over 40 years at this point, and it's challenging building and managing a business. It is even more challenging when it rockets fast, when it gets going. It really is. Yeah. Cauliflower is can be qualified as a superfood. Tell me about that. It is one of the superfoods. It's considered one of the superfoods. It's very high in vitamin C. It's high in antioxidants. It is such a blessing to work with, like I said before, because it is so bland, it takes on so many flavors. And while some will argue that it's not completely anti-inflammatory, for me, it's been completely anti-inflammatory. It's, it's been a gift for me. So I absolutely love the vegetable and all the attributes that it carries. The stems and leaves are an added benefit because they are really high in various vitamins as well as antioxidants. So that's just an added benefit to the vegetable itself. Nice. So I'm going to travel back about a year and a half when my sweetheart Heidi and I went and bought a head of cauliflower and we brought it home and we ground it up we used a food processor and made it into a cauliflower mash and we squeezed the uh, water out as best as we could. And I mean, we really worked on that and it still turned out that it was too wet. So what are some of the challenges that people might have in creating a cauliflower recipe when it needs to be so dry, especially for pizza crusts? The product that we sell in stores and online, we have a proprietary process that we learned early on and then we scaled it. For the recipe in the cookbook, which is a, a similar way, just like you described, I recommend using cheesecloth. I recommend heating up the steaming the cauliflower a little bit, not too much, just enough so it's a little bit softer and can extract some of the water out a little bit easier. And just, it's like a workout. You can it cook is. and work out at the, you can work out at the same time. Get it, get as much water for all these recipes, especially the pizza recipe, get as much water out as possible. Cheesecloth, you can find at any grocery store. Yep. They're readily available. And that's my recommendation for it. Get your workout. Just get your workout. Make it fun. Nice. Kids love to cook. Get them involved. Yeah, exactly. One of the things that I notice is that with Lyme disease, I, you know, I get brain fog and my listeners will know that sometimes I'll, when I'm doing an interview, I'll pause. It's, and the reason I'm pausing is because I'm trying to remember what it was that I was supposed to ask. You find the same I hear thing? You. Yeah. I have the same exact thing. As a matter of fact, I have experienced, uh, and I have such a patient team that understands this, but lupus, as well as all autoimmune, you will struggle with what they call brain fog. Yep. And one of the things they're starting to do, and I just went to KetoCon, I was just there and I was listening to some of the speakers, and there are studies now showing that low-carb diets, and again, we're a lifestyle brand, so... I don't promote any particular diet, but these studies happen to be with patients that are on keto or low-carb lifestyles, and they're finding that the low-carb diet is actually lifting the brain fog. So I've had a lot of people at KetoCon tell me how they, since they've gone keto or low-carb, 
they've, their clarity is amazing and the brain fog has just lifted. And of course, a lot of people at that conference had suffered from some type of autoimmune. So yeah, you need to go completely, maybe grain-free, gluten-free. You said you were already that, maybe low carb. Yeah. I don't know. Just going to add, of course, that it's more than just a diet. You need to make sure you get plenty of sleep yep. and you need to be stress-free. And that also helps lift the brain fog. <laughs> When we're uh, stress-free, when we're doing all that we're doing in the world, because I would venture a guess that you are so busy right now, you could you could use three of you and probably not have enough. That's true. I have an amazing team, though, so I am blessed that I have this team that is just so passionate about the product and they love the mission of paying it forward. So I'm blessed. I have a lot of help and that helps with that clarity and lifting that brain fog. Yeah, awesome. So one of the questions that I like to throw kind of as a curveball to some of my guests is this. You've been doing this now for four or five or six years and there has to have been a moment I want you to think back over the past five years that something happened and it was for you, it was like the angels were singing and it was full validation. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. It was an interaction with somebody or something happened in your business. Have you got one of those for me? I do. I have been working on this about five years, like you said, but really the business itself is three years old. And early on in 2017, we received a letter from a mom who had a son that had a brain tumor. His name is Gavin, and she's given us permission to talk about his story. So he loved pizza, and she said, I'm going to try your pizza, and I just want to make sure I'd like to talk to somebody at the company and make sure that the ingredients are there's not added sugar and there's there's no fillers and he's on this very strict diet and so we went through the ingredients and then we said we'll send you some and he and Gavin can try it and if he likes it then great we'll we'll keep in contact we'd love to hear how he's doing so she was very open and she sent us pictures the cutest picture of Gavin with all these leads all over his head and his head had been shaved and he had the biggest smile on his face so we sent our pizza crust to him. He ended up loving it. Like it was his go-to, his comfort food was our pizza crust with his favorite toppings on it. And I cried when I saw his pictures. I'm a mom of three, so it just uh -huh. touched me. I can't even imagine having a child with a brain tumor. So now we're three years later, Gavin is doing phenomenal, still eating our product and does not have a brain tumor any longer. He had an astrocytoma and it's gone. And it's one of those stories where I'm like, wow, I created something that helped a little boy get through one of the most horrendous things that anybody can experience. And so that story really did it for me. And there's been times where we have failed at things and we're like, how are we going to get through this? And I always think about Gavin and I think about his mom and she's allowed me to share his pictures and his stories openly to inspire others to have hope and, and to know that even with a child, a three-year-old with a brain tumor, there's hope. And Gavin now is almost seven years old. Wow. That, Amazing. That is what I'm talking about. Thank you so much for sharing that. So I'm going to shift on you, and I'd like for you to talk about a time you failed, how you overcame that failure, and what you learned from it. So that is hard because there's a lot of failures. And I say failures are the key to success. They make you better. And I'm thinking about two different ones, but one I'll tell you, again, early 2017, there's kind of a theme here. We're beyond farmer's market. We're now online. We're starting to build a lot of momentum and our business is really starting to boom. And I, I started to question if I was qualified to be the CEO. I knew I needed to start building a team and I it was something I've never done before. I mean, I've, I've been a stay-at-home mom and I've had my team of, of five, my husband and my three kids, and I've never run an outside team. Prior to getting married and having kids, I did work in corporate world, but I was never a manager. And so I started questioning my ability to be the CEO of this growing company. And I hired a CEO and I hired somebody out of desperation, out of fear. I didn't really do a background check. They 
told me a lot of things that I wanted to hear. And out of fear, I hired this person. And a few months into it, I realized that our value system and what was important to me and what was important to the company and the few people that were working for me and giving it their all did not line up with the CEO. We didn't have the same values. We weren't on the same mission He was very monetarily driven, and so many people in big industries are. And I figured out that I made a huge mistake and that he was taking the business into a a direction that was not going to be beneficial to the company, wasn't going to continue caring for our customers the way that we wanted to. We were going to cut different programs that really allowed our customer care or customer service to thrive. And we're known for excellent customer service. So I had to find a way to let that person go. And I did. And I had to trust in myself and believe that I do have the skill set and I can hire the right kind of people. I've always hired humble, hungry and smart people. And what I mean by smart is emotional intelligence. Humble because they understand what our customers' needs are. They can relate to them. They have empathy. And hungry, people that really will go all out. As a scrappy startup, you're not going to work a nine-to-five job. Right. Some days are going to be 12 to 16 hours. You know that because you have your own business. You know, we're, we might work six, seven days. And I needed people that were really mission-driven and ready to give it their all. And I am blessed to have that team. And I've been blessed to be the CEO and lead that team. And once we were able to let that CEO go, our business grew times six in the next few months. We literally just grew massively and we put into place the product that we really believed in. We put that back into place and our sales started growing again and we didn't look at cutting costs or cutting ingredient costs. We wanted to make a superior product. So I guess the message on that is believe in yourself and don't let fear drive your decisions. Really think about things first because it can have a a long lasting impact. And I was lucky. This impact only lasted eight months, um, and we were able to get back on track. It was a learning experience along the way. Absolutely, and a confidence builder. I realized I can do this, and I can lead this amazing team. Yeah, absolutely. So what do you consider your biggest success? Oh, I think the biggest success for me is paying it forward. And it sounds simplistic, but it's, it's really... We have always, as a company, we have always given even when we didn't have anything to give. And it's always come back tenfold. But the most important thing is not to give to receive. It's to give without anything attached to it. Mm -hmm. And I told you about Gavin's story and we ended up sending free crust for a long time. And we never expected to be able to share his story like we have. And I know that we've inspired other people who are suffering from the same condition, not just children, but adults as well. Jessie is another example of that. She's a mom of Kenzie, who was autistic or is autistic and was nonverbal and now is verbal. And in the process of eating our crust and going on the low-carb diet, um, it really helped her autism. But in the meantime, Jessie lost a lot of weight. She sat down with Kenzie every day and ate the pizza crust. And Jessie's story of losing so much weight was amazing. And it was a side effect of us giving the crust every day to Kenzie and her. And there was never an intention to be able to pay it, like to share Jessie's story or, or any of that. It was just a matter of, hey, we want to help Kenzie. And I know in order for Kenzie to eat, you've got to sit down and eat with her. And so we'll send you crust as well. After seven months, Jesse lost 169 pounds and Kenzie became verbal from being nonverbal. And Jesse offered to share her story. She wanted to share her story. Well, Jesse's story actually sold $125,000 worth of pizza. Now, we never sent crust <laughs> to Jesse and, and Kenzie with the intention right. to even tell Jess, Jesse's story or to make money off of it. But that's how it comes back to you. And so paying it forward, and I believe you can do that just in your personal life. Yep. I do it all the time and it comes back tenfold. Yeah, absolutely. So 
That is my biggest success, I think, with this company, and I've seen it over and over. Excellent. And what drives you? Oh, what drives me? Well, definitely conquering fears drives me. I seem to be fear-based and live in fear, and I it's a mindset. And so what I do is I turn that no into a next opportunity. When I start telling myself, no, you can't do it, or no, this is too scary, no means next opportunity for me. And I persevere through that fear. And I'm telling you and your viewers, and you you know this too, because you have Lyme's disease and you've conquered through that and you own your own business and you have this amazing podcast. And all of that happens through persevering through fear, yep. through taking the next step. And the, the biggest thing I've noticed for me, because fear does play a part, it seems like on an ongoing basis, is creating taking a fear and making a habit out of it, making it, once it becomes a habit, it's no longer fear-based. So whatever I'm afraid of, for example, podcast, I can remember doing my very first podcast. I was terrified. I decided I'm going to do lots of podcasts. I'm going to be a guest on as many podcasts as I possibly can. And now I love them. I'm enjoying this. This is so much fun. The same with any kind of media interview or starting a new product, and I'm using our business, but it can be anything in your personal life as well. Whatever you're most fearful of, try to make that a habit and you'll no longer, it's no longer fear. It becomes a habit and it's just a matter of doing it over and over and over until you perfect it. We are quickly approaching 500 episodes of the Urban Farm Podcast. The first few times I did it, I can think back and remember. And the first few times I did online webinars, I think back and I remember, it's like, oh my gosh, it was so confronting. And is anybody listening? And on and on. And now it, I do, on a good day, I'll record six podcasts. And it's called Batching. And it's just second nature to me. It's just because I did them over and over and over again, right? Yes, absolutely. And I believe like winners are disciplined. And so just doing it over and over, making yourself do something you know, a winner is not afraid to fail. And so learning from your failures and your mistakes and conquering your fear. And, you know, passion is power as well. So whatever you're doing in life, you need to be super passionate about it. Yeah. If you're sitting at a desk out there right now, or you're on your way to work to a job that you hate, this is one of the big reasons that I started doing this podcast was to share stories like this, where people persevere. Just take note And look at your life to see what is it that I would love to be doing and go for it. Wouldn't you say? Absolutely. I talk about the five P's of our business and we've already talked about several of them, but passion is one. Passion is one. Pizza is another, right? (laughs) No, pizza is not one. Perseverance is one, which is persevering. You know, there's a lot of highs and a lot of lows in business, but there's a lot of There's not a lot in between taking the highs and persevering through the lows. I talk about passion. I talk about paying it forward. I talk about perseverance. People, I think I mentioned that. I love humble, hungry, and emotionally intelligent people in our business. That's what, you know, they're mission-driven as well. And then paying it forward. And And I talk about the five... And and pizza are the product, absolutely. (laughs) And making a great product. Nice. You said a little while ago that no means your next opportunity. And that occurred to me when you said that, it was like, hold on, that's an acronym. (laughs) Did you unpack that on purpose or is it just something that we made up in the moment? Oh, no. I mean, I I use that all the time and, uh, you know, I, it just came out, but yeah, next opportunity is for us, our next opportunity is creating, and I mentioned this before, is creating more family favorite type foods and making them healthy so everybody can eat them. And they've got to taste good. Taste is a big issue. Oh, yes. Absolutely cool. If you could recommend one book for our listeners, what would it be and why? I heard Simon Sinek speak at an event and I immediately went out and purchased his book, which was Find Your Why. And I think we are talking about this through this entire podcast. And you mentioned anybody out there that has a job that they're not loving, find your why. That's what's going to lead to your passion. 
For me, it was creating products that I could eat and enjoy as simple as it is, family fun night, pizza and games again with my family. And then all of a sudden I was sharing it with others and they found it beneficial. So find your why is really just everyone has a why and it's usually what creates passion and that's going to help you in no matter what you do in relationships, in your business, maybe a career change. So I love listening to Simon Sinek. He's on audio. I also loved reading his book. He has five different books. And Find Your Why was one of the ones that I would highly recommend. Excellent. And what one final piece of advice do you have for our listeners? Have big goals. I mean, people always use the term dream big, but write them down. Create a habit. Create a morning routine that lives in gratitude. And when you're writing your goals down, have your gratitude chart as well there. And the thing about gratitude that I love so much is that you can't be angry and have gratitude at the same time. You can't be fearful and have gratitude. So if your goals, if you write down your goals and you write down the obstacles to those goals, that's usually, and this is another book, The Obstacle is the Way, that's usually the way to those goals. And if it's a person or a thing that's causing you to not move forward with your goals or to change your life, write a gratitude list about that person, that thing, that circumstance. There is, I mean, no matter what the case is, how horrible, for example, that CEO, there's a whole nother story to that story, but I've always written down gratitude for anybody that has affected the business negatively or my personal life negatively. I mean, I look at my story of lupus and Sjogren and a time where I had a pulmonary embolism and almost died and I was really unable to walk for nine months and my youngest son went to live with my in-laws. It was a horrible time in our life. But if that hadn't happened, and I can't, I can't even imagine where my life would be right now. That's why I've created this business. I have so much gratitude for that nine months of my life that was horrific and my health was gone because it made me realize how valuable and how grateful I am to health alone. And so having gratitude and looking at the obstacle of why your goals and your dreams are not happening can make a huge difference. And I suggest having a morning routine and I do my gratitude list every morning. I have a quiet time in the morning before anybody gets up. That was a lot of advice, by the way. That was a lot of advice. That's how my, yeah. (laughs) That was beautiful. I was actually sitting over here smiling because one of the things that Heidi and I do, my, Heidi's my sweetheart, one of the things that Heidi and I do just about every day is visit in on the gratitude because I found that the more I can appreciate even the people that have wronged me, you know, I've had a couple of things happen in the past year or so that it's like, it's just wrong. They shouldn't be doing that. But if I hold on to that, that anger, that angst, it takes me down. And when I'm appreciating them for what I learned from the situation, it changes the situation. Absolutely. That's so well said. And that's exactly what I wanted to say. And so I, I 100%. So a lot of times I'll talk to people and they'll say, oh, I wish I could do this or I wish I could do that. And they'll say, you can. Yeah, can't what's stopping you? you? Yeah. And what's stopping you? And it's always a, a particular thing or a person or a situation. Mm-hmm. And I believe... that if you wallow in it, it'll never happen. But if you can have, find gratitude in some way about that person or situation like you just shared, you will overcome it. And your no becomes your next opportunity. opportunity. I love it. (laughs) Well, you know, and I have to say the reason I ask the question that I ask, which is I'm going to shift on you and I'd like for you to talk about a time you failed, how you overcame that failure and what you learned from it is for people to understand that stuff happens and if we stand back and look at that situation, we can get to a place of gratitude and release it, and we get to be bigger in the world from it. Yes, absolutely. And we get to be bigger for somebody else, and somebody else gets to reap the benefits of that. Yeah. Absolutely. Pay it forward. 100%. Pay it forward, 
show gratitude, discipline. <laughs> it sounds hard, but it really isn't. It isn't. And it's one step at a time. Exactly. It's one step at a time. Yeah. yeah. So I have to tell you, like I referenced earlier, we're almost to episode 500 in four years. Amazing. Uh, Amazing. Thank you. By the way. Thank you. And, you know, I've gotten to interview some amazing backyard gardeners, some rock stars. Jason Mraz has been on the show. Salatin, Joel Salatin was on the show. Uh, You know, I've had some all all the way from backyard gardeners to rock stars in the industry. And I have to tell you something. I can see why from this conversation why you're being successful the way you are. Your attitude, Aww. your uh, way of being, your way of sharing the pay it forward. Everybody listening out there, pay attention to Amy's story because this is what has us be more successful in the world and it has us make a bigger difference in the world. Almost 500 episodes, I can see clearly, Amy, why you are being successful the way that you are. Thank you so much. That is, I will take that. I will accept that. And I am honored. Thank you so much. That means so much to me coming from you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, and thank you so much for joining us on the show today. I am just over here. Great big smile on my face. I've been having, you know, getting chills when we've been having the conversation a couple of times with your stories. You brought me to tears You're a rock star. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us today. Well, thank you for doing what you do and doing this podcast. They mean a lot. I'm I'm a huge podcast listener, especially when I'm on airplanes. And so I appreciate that you take the effort. It's not easy, I'm sure, to create 500 (laughs) episodes. Yeah, well, it's, you know, it's one step at a time. And the first one was hard and the 10th one was hard-ish and the 100th one was easier and you know, as we talked about earlier, this is this is how we do it. You just take one step at a time and pay it forward. Pay it forward. How can our listeners get a hold of you? They can follow me on Instagram at Hey Amy Lacey, A M Y L A C E Y. If they want the Cauliflower Kitchen Cookbook, it's sold everywhere where books are sold. So anywhere you can buy a book, you can get that cookbook. Buy the book and Barnes and Noble as well as online. And then for our cauliflower products. We have uh, several SKUs of different types of pizza crust, and we're coming out with top pizzas and, like I said, entrees next year. And they are nationwide in grocery stores, or you can go to Cauliflower, C-A-L-I-F-L-O-U-R, foods.com, and order directly online or Amazon. Nice. And we'll have all of this information on the show notes page. We want to thank Amy and the folks over at Abrams Publishing, as well as her team at Cauliflower Foods, as we have five grocery bags with a selection of cauliflower pizza crust and flatbread products and a signed copy of Cauliflower Kitchen. And we get to share them with you, our listening audience. If you would like to enter this drawing, send an email to podcast at urbanfarm.org with the subject, I'm craving cauliflower in my kitchen. Be sure to include your name and mail mailing address, and we will pick five random emails from the first 50 people who respond during the giveaway. And it's not just any grocery bag. It's an amazing bag that supports women in Bangladesh. It's called the Apollos bag. It holds 120 pounds, and it's a bag that you'll want to carry around just because it's so stylish, and you can take it to the beach or the grocery store. It holds a lot of, a lot of stuff, and we, we use the proceeds for those bags to pay it forward. We use them for charity. All right. So we're going to go back here for a moment. That sounds like a story you need to tell us. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Well, we don't actually make the bag. We partner with Apollos and they support women in Bangladesh. So it's called the Apollos bag. It holds 120 pounds. We recommend using it as a grocery bag. In California, you get charged for bags. I think in other parts of the country, you do as well. So we suggest keeping the bag in your car and using it for grocery shopping. Or it's so stylish, you can carry it around or take it to the beach. It holds a lot of stuff in it. And it's every time we sell an Apollos bag, it has our logo on it. We take those proceeds along with our other swag. We have T-shirts, and we'll be filling up that bag with our swag, by the way. So your listeners will get T-shirts, hats, things like that. 
anything that we sell on our Cauliflower Cares page, we donate to charity and we support Lupus Foundation, Mentoring Project, and the American Diabetes Association. Wow, how did we miss all of that? That's epic in itself. I know. I completely did not even talk about that, and I should have. Yes, we have a Cauliflower Cares page. It's cauliflowercares.com. You can get to it through our website. And we are really passionate about, like I said, paying it forward. And we we pay it forward beyond those particular organizations, but those are the ones that we focus on monthly. And we're really passionate about, obviously, lupus. And then the mentoring project is dads being dads to kids that don't have dads. And that goes really deep with my childhood, and that's a whole nother episode. But I love that these fathers are stepping up to be fathers to other kids or mentors, more importantly, yeah. to, to kids without fathers. And that's making a huge difference in the world because, you know, there's so many deadbeat parents out there. And so... It's a way for people to mentor kids that don't have parents that are there for them. So I love that. And then, of course, the American Diabetes Association, because our products are used by so many diabetics that I feel like we should be a part of that organization in a bigger way. Wow. Well, once again, thank you so much for joining us on the show today, Amy. You, You have a sparkly, awesome, wonderful story. Thank you. Seriously, thank, I'm really honored by this. Thank you, you. You bet. So you can find show notes from today's podcast at urbanfarm.org forward slash cauliflower. And that's C-A-L-I-F-L-O-U-R. We are your urban farming resource. You can find us on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and everywhere podcasts are found. Also visit urbanfarm.org to find articles, webinars, courses, and more. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for joining us on the Urban Farm Podcast. We hope you enjoyed today's episode of the Urban Farm Podcast. Remember to listen for tips, advice, and resources to help you on your journey with urban farming. You can find us on the web at urbanfarm.org or send us an email to podcast at urbanfarm.org. In the words of Vincent Van Gogh, great things are done by a series of small things brought together. Be encouraged that with each lesson learned and skill developed, you are one step closer in the direction of your dreams.